I think the Starliner was the cherry on top, and people are viewing this really? as the bottom of the bad news. I mean, it was just, you know, Calhoun has experience on with GE. He was head of GE aircraft engines from 2000 to 2003. He was on GE. He led GE infrastructure. He's on CATS board. He has big industrial experience. So maybe the engineering precision isn't quite as tight as it should be at Boeing, and I think this signals... This is the end of it, and this is the end of communicating on when return to service will happen. Phil just mentioned that he doesn't anticipate any other big management changes, maybe some movement one level down. Do you think that the company now has the management structure in place that it needs? Do you feel confident about the leadership at this point? You saw Stan Deal took over from the services business into commercial aircraft. Kevin McAllister was the first resignation, uh, Dennis being the second, clearly. So I do think the management changes are over. But when you look at the board, there's 13 to 14 members. The average age is 63 years old, seven years of tenure on the board. So maybe looking at GE, they've had their entire board shift over, essentially, in the last 24 months. Maybe you could see some changes to the board, how it's composed. Is it 13 members? Is it 18? Does it go to 10? Uh, maybe some changes there. Uh, yeah. Calhoun's been on the board since 09, right? Yes. He's been there for... He has 10 years of board experience, yes. so quite a bit. Uh, so he's been there since, in, for most of the Max's development, I'm assuming. Is that enough fresh thinking, or, do, is, or does the company want to err on the side of stability and experience within Boeing rather than bringing in someone who's completely new? I, I think he has a lot of experience. The, the press release doesn't signal he's an interim CEO. It seems like he's going to be CEO for the next five years or so or whenever it is. Um, and you've seen another uh, head of board of directors, right? So this is the another chairman role, three and four months. Um, quite a bit of change already on that front. But, but I guess my question is, you think he's... The right, the right person to carry this forward. I think you need somebody with industry experience and company experience. This is not like GE where you're Immelt's gone and you're bringing in Larry Kopp, somebody with operational experience. You need somebody fairly close to the situation. So I think this is the right fit for now. All right, I want to bring Leslie into the conversation as well. Leslie, it's been a rough year, not just for the company itself, but for the workforce as well. And then, of course, you had that halt to production last week. What does this leadership change uh, do for morale within the company? Well, so far, nothing has changed. The, the uh, stoppage to the production is not going to even take effect until January. We have no idea how long that's going to last. Um, even when the FAA got news of Mullenberg's replacement, of course, they don't comment on personnel changes, they reiterated, we are in charge of this process, kind of showing some teeth again to Boeing. So they're not going to rush this through. And we have no way of finding out how long that, that this could possibly last, um, which will have, of course, impacts on the suppliers like Spirit, which makes the fuselages. Uh, and all the way down to airline pilots, which are, are missing overtime uh, and complaining about that. Yeah. Sheila, I mean, you and I have talked about this before, but, and you mentioned Starliner. We had that launch. It was, uh, did not go as expected over the weekend, although they did have a successful landing uh, on Sunday. There have been issues with KC-46 tanker on the defense side. Uh, they've decided to opt out of bidding for uh, the new ICBM contract as well. There have been other things plaguing this company uh, throughout the year, too, maybe perhaps overshadowed by 737 MAX. The 777X delay. This yes. Is long, so. Thank you. Yes. Um, so how should we take all of these, put all of these together? How do investors need to think about that? I think we talked about this earlier this morning is there's a reason there's only two commercial OEMs out there. There's Airbus and Boeing. Bombardier and Embraer have joined forces with each of them respectively. There's a handful of defense OEMs. So this is really hard. Development programs are always delayed and this isn't something new. But I think investor perception and credibility have gone out the door as we've been too optimistic about the return to service. So the board signaled that there needed to be a change. But I don't think there needs to be a cultural overall at Boeing. It is fairly difficult, and we have to kind of honor that. Uh, and Leslie, in terms of the messaging, I think I saw some reporting from you this morning that there were some internal notes uh, about the leadership changes as well, right? Yeah, and uh, Greg Smith, the CFO, moving in as interim CEO, uh, and, and at least until the middle of January, just trying to calm everyone down. Um, but there is a tone of we felt that this was the best way, by making this change with Mullenberg, to restore trust. And that's one of Boeing's biggest challenges right now. It's not just the FAA, although that's the, probably their biggest hurdle. But they have airline customers whose uh, compensation from this is growing uh, every day as this goes on. Uh, so restoring trust is, is what the, uh, the main message is.